Mercantile Stores Company, Incorporated, is a traditional department store retailer. We operate our stores throughout the United States under 13 different names. Names that are well known and trusted in each of the communities we serve. These are communities located in the heartland of America. For years, we have prided ourselves on our tradition of leadership in fashion merchandising, innovative retailing techniques, and competitive pricing. Our goal is to continue these traditions of excellence in order to become the most profitable department store chain in the country. Our formula for success has several key elements. People who provide great service for our customers, as satisfying the customer is the driving force behind everything that we do and innovation in every aspect of our constantly changing business. Through innovation, we will continue to grow our business and our people. Merchandising, which provides a broad assortment of fashionable products at the proper price points, which offers superior quality and value for our customers. And efficiency in our operations. By controlling our costs, we are able to have lower margins and more profitability. We believe that if we do all of these things, we will achieve our goal of being the number one department store chain in the United States. Mercantile has always created a balance between being an organization that could take advantage of the benefits of centralized controls while allowing each store to continue to be self-empowered to run their business as only they know best. In fact, much of our strength has lain within the communities that we serve. And for that reason, Mercantile has always contributed to those communities in whatever way we could. It is part of the Mercantile culture. But where did Mercantile start? And how did we get to this point? For those who work with us, it is a history worth knowing. Because in our history lies the creation and birth of many of the philosophies and core values that we live by today. It was in 1914 that the Mercantile Stores Corporation was formed by taking over the assets and properties of 22 stores from the bankrupt H.B. Claflin Company. Twelve of these stores are still in our family today, and most of them had been in existence for years. A.J. Edsall, the founder of Roots in Terre Haute, sold linen handkerchiefs to Abraham Lincoln. Mercantile, although successful, found their first two decades of operation a difficult task. However, in 1932, under the direction of the Milliken family, Mercantile looked for leadership from outside the company. They recruited Francis G. Kingsley to serve as president. He was a seasoned retailer who, because of his previous banking experience, was also thoroughly at home in the area of finance. Kingsley immediately set about the business of raising additional capital. He traveled around the country, visiting each store, where a key part of his strategy was to ensure that each store was customer-driven. Mercantile then introduced other innovations. Supply purchasing, taxes, accounting, insurance, and credit were brought under the centralized control of the New York office, and accounts receivable were sold to a New York bank to generate money to buy more merchandise. Mercantile became an established pace setter in other areas as well. A group life insurance plan was offered to employees in 1934. Advancement from within became a core value of the company, and an on-campus college recruitment program was implemented in 1935. The success of these programs can be judged by the fact that almost all of Mercantile's leading management from that date on were hired and trained in this same way. In addition, in 1940, Mercantile was one of the first in the industry to offer profit sharing. A pension plan was introduced in 1946, and other innovative benefits of the time were also offered. In 1941, Kingsley was elected to chairman of the board, and Harold Jockers became the company's fourth president. The unique relationship that was forged between Kingsley and Jockers changed the face of the Mercantile Company. It was through these two unique individuals that the mercantile culture was given birth and nurtured for years to come. As 
World War II became a reality, women now were a key part of assembly lines. Rosie the Riveter, for the first time, was earning man-sized paychecks and spending her money liberally on whatever consumer goods were available. Mercantile benefited with a steady growth in sales and profits in both soft and hard lines, eventually becoming a public company in 1946. Over the years, Mercantile has frequently looked to its individual stores for innovations. An example of this occurred when Alan Clark, the president of the Jones Store in Kansas City, called the New York office and told them about the great success he had been having with the beauty salon in his store. Because of that one phone call, company-owned beauty salons were soon in mercantile stores throughout the country, creating additional profits and generating a great deal of customer traffic. When the war ended in 1945, Mercantile was among the first to foresee the population swing to the suburbs. In fact, the Jocelyn's Group pioneered the idea of suburban stores by opening one of the first in the country in 1944. Other Mercantile suburban stores soon followed, many being the first in their communities. This established a quickly escalating trend of sales in the downtown properties shifting to the suburban stores. Two new department stores were also added to the Mercantile Group, Glass Block and J.B. White. Mercantile, looking for other opportunities, opened 67 appliance stores to meet the demand of the post-war consumer. This was a successful market for Mercantile, but it was one they only stayed in for 10 years when they realized that their customers were now more interested in fashion apparel than appliances. In the 50s, women became an important part of America's workforce. This brought about major shifts in consumer needs and tastes. America was working and expanding as never before, and so was Mercantile. For the next 10 years, Mercantile acquired well-established retail properties and opened branches of downtown stores. In addition, many of the older downtown properties were remodeled and expanded. In 1950, Mercantile anticipated the move of populations to the south when they purchased Gafer's, a small store of 40,000 square feet in Mobile, Alabama. Within 20 years, Gafer's developed a strong presence in the south and became the company's largest group, having over six and a half million square feet of retail space. Mercantile believed in meeting the price of its competition. To compete, they decided to expand their existing private label merchandise and introduce new items as well. The private label merchandise could be bought and sold at substantially lower prices than nationally branded goods. It was also during this time that the company led the industry by expanding its return policy so merchandise could be returned to the department where it was purchased. Prior to this, all returns had to go to the complaint department. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you Tomorrow I'll miss you Remember I'll always... The 60s found Robert Redford working in the mercantile mailroom. Who knows what would have happened if he had stuck with it. Mercantile became a two-legged merchant. Now that their private labels had gained wide customer acceptance, the company began promoting and expanding nationally advertised brand names as well. In another original move, Mercantile stores began staying open evenings and on weekends to accommodate their customers. This decade also marked the computer revolution for Mercantile and the rest of the retail industry. Now, detailed information as to what merchandise was selling, quantities, styles, colors and sizes in stock and on order were immediately available, as well as much, much more. Shopping malls created quite a stir in the 70s, and specialty boutiques opened everywhere. To satisfy their customers' needs, Mercantile continued to trade up in fashion and quality. In addition, point-of-sale terminals were installed, enabling stores to check credit automatically on the selling floor and to process other information, saving hours and sometimes days of time. Mercantile continued to expand, opening 41 new stores between 1973 and 1983. The focus was on value, quality merchandise at reasonable prices, the addition of new departments, and of course, the customer was always right. 
As the company moved ahead into the 80s, the steady growth which started in the 1940s continued to build. The reason for that success, again, was people. Over the years, Mercantile has been fortunate to have the strong leadership and the people to instill within the organization the values that have made their vision a reality. Mercantile has consistently been one of the most profitable department stores in the country because we've made the decisions that position us for the future. For example, over the past decade, while a lot of companies in the industry were taking on debt, we were reducing hours so we could take advantage of the opportunities in the 90s. Opportunities such as the acquisition of Maison Blanche, investing in our people by establishing Mercantile Stores University, and moving our corporate headquarters and the buying offices to Fairfield, Ohio. And that's just the beginning. When Mercantile Headquarters moved to Fairfield, Ohio, we wanted to improve the quality of life for our associates. So we chose to be close to the strong values of Mid-America that have always been paramount to the success of our business. The operating costs and taxes were also lower. This afforded us the opportunity to provide a more spacious environment for the business and the associate. The result has been greater productivity, cost savings, improved store corporate communications and cooperation, more flexible career paths, and a genuine win-win situation for the company, associates, and suppliers. Mercantile also joined the likes of General Motors, McDonald's, and Disney by founding our own business school, Mercantile Stores University, or MSU. This $2.5 million commitment is a first in the retail industry. Department managers, buyers, and middle managers come to this new 30,000-square-foot facility where they get an intense, condensed exercise in real-world issues such as finance, leadership, business ethics, quality management, and international trade, just to name a few. MSU attendees also experience a Venture Out program where they learn to trust and depend on each other as they build their teamwork skills. In a truly unique experience, each class has the opportunity to participate in a question and answer session with a member of the Mercantile Board or a corporate executive where they can ask any question they choose and get direct, honest answers. This sharing of information is a philosophy that runs throughout the entire company. The school and each of the courses offered has a common thread. What is the benefit to the customer?